Welcome everybody, it's Andy here from SE Survival. As we are prepping this year for Alaska, we wanted to take the chainsaw, we wanted to take a tire inflation system, we want to get a battery system, we want to get it all working, and we want to be able to run for three weeks without having to come, other than fuel and food maybe, we want to be self-sufficient. How are we going to do that? We have bought ourselves some new toys. We were talking about taking the chainsaw, that's the gas, the uh, chaps, the helmet, the bar oil, the um, two-stroke mix, all that, just in case we came across a down tree across the road, or we wanted to buck up some firewood for camping. Admittedly, um, Probably 10 days to two weeks of those day, that, that three week period is going to be on tarmac, paved roads. We are going to go off road for a little while to find free camping for sure. Definitely want to have a fire while we're up there. We know we can take end cuts to America. No real what we call tree wood, but we can take construction cut ends through the border, but that's space in the truck. The chainsaw, space in the truck, tipping it over, fuel everywhere, taking another jerry can, besides the two fuel cans we're taking with us, and a jerry of water, I don't want to take another fuel can. So this, we bought the Milwaukee Fuel 18 volt cordless chainsaw. The kit came with a rapid charger. 12 volt and 18 volt. An 18 volt lithium 12 amp per hour battery and the chainsaw itself. Battery. Slot straight in. Chain brake. This will not work. If I pull the safety, pull the trigger, nothing's working with the chain brake on. Pull it back. We have a chainsaw. Chain brake on. We're good to go. The bar is made by Oregon along with the chain and we also have a special tool under here. A bit of a pain to get out to be honest with you. And that tool has a screwdriver end and a socket end and they are for adjusting the bar and the chain tension right here. One thing I did notice when we pulled it out of the box is that these were about a quarter turn loose so tighten them up. Again quite handy having this in here because then it's always with the chain. So also bought a 12 volt battery and a tire inflator, a portable tire inflator. We're going to discuss this after we've looked at the chainsaw. But again, the idea here is to inflate the tires on the trailer or the big trailer without having to be connected to the vehicle. I'll explain later. The fuel chainsaw is a brushless motor chainsaw. It does have bar oil, which is about the only liquid that we will even need to carry with us or will spill. Okay, so this has bar oil in it already. The 12 amp per hour, 18 volt, 18 volt battery apparently is good for what they call 150 cuts. Now, the problem is, what is 150 cuts? How does it relate? We're hoping only to come across logs around this thick. I have another log behind me which we are going to attempt to cut. I want to apologize, this is not the first cut, because we did do this video once before and we had a problem with the audio, so I'm repeating this video and we are going to test it again. The battery is actually 
full. There are four bars on the lights here, so we will see how this fares. Put my head protection on. Oh my goodness, I have the Eco chainsaw gas for the 20 inch bar, let's just cut straight through it. I'm going to cut right through a couple of knots, I've got two knots here, let's have a look and see what it does here. knots right through there it bogged a little bit at the beginning but it didn't bog it cut right through this is amazing I can't believe how good that is for an electric chainsaw that 12 amp per hour battery is going to give it enough oomph to cut through things again this is what we're expecting to come across on a road now let's see what it does with a bigger piece of wood This has been cut on an angle. I'm going to try cutting it straight so that we can put this through the splitter later. Let's see what this does. I know it's a 16 inch bar. We know we're going to have problems because it's not going to be big enough to go through the wood, but we can cut a layer through it. Okay, that bogged a little bit. Not sure why, but we've definitely cut this. I'm gonna have another go, see what happens. Just to give it another fair test, I'm going to cut this one. No bogging this time. That was pretty good. Not sure why. Maybe I was giving it a little bit too much dig and push. The exhaust is right here. So it just scoops straight out the bottom. It's not coming out the back or out the front or out the front here. So first impressions. Thumbs up. This saw again this is what 18 inches round it's 
log, I should say, not the saw. Um, 18 inches. This could be probably as big as we see on the road if we see any down trees. I think this is going to be faster than a handsaw. We had decided that we were going to take a handsaw and a machete, but I kind of think that we'll be stuck for hours doing that, especially with something like this, whereas now this becomes a game changer and I can put it in the truck and I don't have to worry about any liquids other than the ball oil. Okay? So far, I am liking the investment. Okay, let's go and have a look at the tire inflator. So we bought the Milwaukee tire inflator because I wanted a mobile solution. I have a 12 volt tire inflator. It's just a car compressor. It has a certain reach. It's 12 volts. It means I have to plug it in. I can do the truck four wheels quite easily. I was debating whether to get the Viair system. One two gallon tank, two compressors, a 30 foot airline hose. Where do I put that? It says I've got to put it in here, there and everywhere and it's going to take up space. I've just said that I want a chainsaw. Also, I don't want to take all the extra stuff that comes with our chainsaw. I don't want to do that with this tank and I'd heard about this from a friend. I was very skeptical. It says it needs to run 10 minutes then you let it cool down for 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah, but that's not very good. Then I'm hearing things that are saying you can inflate you know, 20 PSI, 30 P 35 PSI, or up to 35 PSI in about two, three, four minutes. But this thing doesn't plug in. It has a 12 volt battery. It comes with the airline hose, which screws in. It has some adapters. It has a boat or an inflatable adapter. It has the Schrader for a bike, and it also has a ball attachment. So it comes with a few things. We'll get into pricing in a little while. This is not a sponsored Milwaukee ad whatsoever. What does it do? Power it on. You can manually compress or press your air inflate your tires, but you have negative and positive here and you can set the PSI and walk away from this thing. It'll do its thing. So you're not tied down to doing anything. The advantage with this to me, I foresee, and I'd like to check it out, is I can inflate a tire remotely. The trailer, it's a 15 foot trailer. Put that behind the truck. My sockets are so far away. The 12 volt system on here at the cigar lighters are rated at 10 amp, 10, 10 amp breakers. And when we were in Oregon, they kept blowing the trips, which meant we had to keep redoing it and it took a long time. I can give Sandra this and she can go and fill up the tires on the trailer whilst I'm doing the truck. So let's see how this works. So pressing it on, from there we have a display. There is overheat scenarios in this thing, there's battery life in here so we can see here the battery is, is low, we have used it already. Um, I can inflate by pressing the plus and minus to set what I want, or I can go back down, okay? If I find that the tire pressures or the display, when I plug this in, doesn't seem right, if I've checked it before, I can press the power button and press the plus button three times, it will auto calibrate this. I did this today because on the truck it said I was at 36 PSI, this said I was at 33 and a half. Today I reset this. Now it is perfect. So I'm going to use my trail deflator, which is a Curry Enterprises. Um, there's a lot of people out there, ARB, there's a lot of other brands out there. Similar idea. We pull the core out, we deflate it to whatever's on here. We are going to 
take these tires, which I believe are 35 psi, down to 20. We'll start a clock and we'll see how long it takes to charge them. All right, let's get on it. If you've never used one of these, simple. Take your valve cap off, screw the adapter on. Now, this portion moves and currently there's no pressure. So we're gonna take out the valve core, which we've done. And this is set to 34 PSI. We'll pull it out. We're gonna take it down to 20 PSI. That's roughly what I'm going to run these tires when we're on the graded roads of Alaska. When we're up on the rough roads, even when we're off-roading, I think the trailer around 20 PSI will be good. I think the truck's going to be front wheels uh, 22 PSI and the rears I'll leave at 25 from 35. And that's because of the tongue weight of the trailer. So we're at 20 PSI now. Once we get back to the graded road, I'm going to inflate these, so we're going to put the core back in. Unscrew the valve tool. Okay. Let's screw the adapter in, which is a screw thread, as I said. says 21 psi so we got 21 psi on the inflator you can press the desired pressure individually or you can press and hold to go a little bit faster and it goes up in five psi increments so that makes life a little bit easier we will start the inflator and the clock get to 35 psi designated target this is the actual psi and 3 minutes 42 that is not a bad time to inflate one tire from 20 psi to 35 psi is any of this hot the airline hose is a bit warm and it lukewarm but other than that no we are still at two battery bars left, just under four minutes. That's not bad, remote. Like I said, Sandra could do that while I'm doing the, tr the truck. Charge the lithium battery, four amp per hour, 12 amp per hour on the chainsaw. Charge that in the truck, as I will show you in a little while on how we do that. But I think this combination of having a cordless chainsaw and a cordless tire inflator could be the way to go for us going to Alaska. I'm sure there's going to be lots of comments on, yeah, you can get on board this, that, and the other. It has an airline blower on there. I can just, well, let's try it out, shall we? Let's see if we can blow any of this dust off of the chainsaw. 
we've got the boat adapter or inflatable. Let's turn it on. It's not 120 psi, but it's definitely a blower that can clean stuff off. Hey, that's an added bonus. So, again, this is not a paid advert for Milwaukee. Um, it's something that we want to choose to look at to travel. It doesn't take away the gas chainsaw whatsoever. Um, we enjoy that immensely, so if we're going locally, yes. But this is more for our longer trips. Something to get us out of trouble, cut fire, wood up and have it for a fire. Okay, let's go over to now have a look at how we charge this system up in the vehicle. So, before we move into the battery system and what we've got going on in the truck and how we're going to charge all those batteries, this is the charger that I, the inflator that I use on the vehicle currently. It's just a 12 volt press button um, uh, inflator. From there, I can reach all the wheels and tires with the assistance of an extension cable which can plug into the cigar lighter or my auxiliary battery which I'm about to show you. This system is here to help complement our trailers as well because when we were in Colorado with the two fridges we actually ran out of battery power thinking I could charge it during the day off of the vehicle. Uh, the battery charger we used before was a 2 amp battery charger. It worked and it was okay but the problem was the heat. So now we've got a better system in place that can charge a lot faster. I'll show you all that right now. So, what I want to do is I want to be able to charge the M12 and the M18 Milwaukee battery. I want to charge my 20 volt DeWalt battery because I want to take my drill and my impact driver with us just in case we need to do any fixes on the road. I want to charge the chainsaw just in case and I want to charge the tire inflator. How do we do that? The plan, plan is to use the Ford 120 400 watt inverter on board. But this morning I found out a problem. To do this we need to turn the car on and I will show you the issue. Hopefully you can see this little LED and it's informing us that the inverter on the truck is on. 400 watts, I believe it's around 2 amps. The DeWalt charger can charge 12 volts, sorry, it's a 110 charger with a half an amp current flow. When we plug it in, it will flash until it sorts itself out. It acknowledges that it's got something plugged in. And then this will charge up. Working perfectly fine. No problem. We know that this is coming with us. It's fantastic. The problem I had... The problem I have is with this charger. This is the Milwaukee Rapid Charger. It can do 12 and 18 volts. This is a 110, but it has a 2.75 amp current flow. So when we plug it in, it will flash to say it acknowledges something's been plugged in, but it doesn't stop flashing. it doesn't turn on the inverter. And that's without anything connected. If I plug in a 12 volt battery, the red LED should come on, and it doesn't. So if it doesn't do it with the 12, the problem I have is it won't do it with the 18. That is not gonna be a very good fix for us. That was a game changer. That meant we are getting rid of the battery charger. 
But then I came up with another idea. I do have a 12 volt portable 300 watt 30 amp 110 inverter. If I plug it into the cigar lighter of the vehicle right there and turn it on, I get a green light, the fan is on, it is working. So now if we plug in the Milwaukee charger, we turn it on, we have a green light, the fan is running, we have no LED lights but I know it's connected. So let's try plugging in the 12 volt battery. Straight away we've got power and we have charge. If we plug in the big 12 ampere hour battery, we have charge. This is now a fix. This LED will change to a flashing green light when it's getting close to being full, solid green light when it's full. If I connect both of these, it's a smart charger. This one will flash because this one is in waiting to be charged. It can only charge one at a time. Once this goes green and it's full, it will then charge this one. I reckon about an hour to charge this battery on its own. And again, this is only going to be once every now and then. So we can use the vehicle voltage with my inverter to charge the Milwaukee stuff. That's good. Now, the next piece of the puzzle was how do we charge everything else? We have headlights, we have a tripod light, we have a fridge, we even have a drone now. So we've got to be able to charge all of this stuff up. The solution here was auxiliary battery system is this guy. Before I take the cover off, we have, as you can see, I'm charging up the camera, two 12 volts on this side. I also have two 12 volts on this side. This battery system is portable. I can take it out of the vehicle by disconnecting these Anderson plugs. This Anderson plug goes to the alternator and the battery at the front of the vehicle. Disconnect this. This is two gauge wire. It charges up the main battery. And this Anderson plug goes to the bumper at the rear and charges up the trailer. This quick connect right here this is the solar panel on the roof of the truck and this little tail here this is the alternator turn on because this is a smart alternated vehicle what that means is once the vehicle battery is full it doesn't charge the car better on emissions by having that little ignition switch wire it tells the alternator to stay switched on to charge up the auxiliary battery now what is the auxiliary battery let's take the cover off Yes, it's a mess. Wires everywhere. But what do we have? We have a D250SA CTEC single battery with only one device, 100 amp charger. But because I'm charging two 12 volt batteries in the little trailer and two 6 volt batteries and they are over 100 amps, I need to add a Smart Pass 120 from CTEC as well. This can bump up to a maximum of 800 amps. Standalone 100 maximum with the smart pass 800 300 amp fuse one here one on the vehicle as well just in case we have a problem right now we have three leds on the top led is for solar the bottom led is for alternator and the third led is for the battery it is charging up we have a shunt because I have a gauge at the front of the vehicle to tell me my amperage and my voltage and my capacity of what is in this battery. I have a fuse pack, 10, 15, 15 and 30 amps. These supply power to the cigar lighters. And then I have a 90 amp hour battery underneath of everything in here. This wire here, which I made out of a uh, tow wiring harness is the powers and the amperages and the voltages for the display at the front of the vehicle. 
They are all designed as quick disconnect so I can move this battery pack out of the vehicle if I need to. Now, if I am plugged into the vehicle cigar lighter for the fridge when it's in here for traveling, I can now plug in my auxiliary inverter, my auxiliary inverter, and I can plug into my inverter my Milwaukee charger. I can turn it on. You can see that I have power flow, I have charging going on, and all from the batteries. So this is a great fix for us. This will give us power while we're driving. If this takes an hour, the batteries will be recouped from the alternator, the fridge stays connected to the 12 volt circuit. At night time, I disconnect from the vehicle because the cigar lighters will turn off after about an hour. I plug it into this auxiliary battery and the fridge in the, tra in the truck will run all night. During the day, I switch it back to the 12 volt supply. This battery then will be charged up. Let me show you the display. This is the display. This is the display made by another company for SeaTech. Currently I am charging one amp, 15 volts, and if I check this button, it tells me the battery is at 89% and it will take 36 hours at one amp to charge this battery. I have also currently plugged in the battery charger to charge up the Milwaukee battery. So it is draining right now one amp to charge up that battery. What it really means is it's sucking juice out of the big battery and currently it doesn't need to be charging at 20 amps, 30 amps, whatever it desires. So it slowed it right down to one amp. That is our battery system. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click subscribe and hit that bell for any notifications. Survive to be alive.